Hey everyone, so I've decided to create this new series of videos called Simplify Electronics. So basically I'll select one electronic component we use every day in our life, or at least for making electronic circuits. And I'll give an overview of the history of the component, how it works, and how you could make one yourself. For today I'll be talking about microphone. So what is a microphone? It is a transducer device that converts sound waves into electrical signal. What is a transducer? Well, it is a device that converts one form of energy into another form of energy. Light bulbs, pressure sensors, and speakers are examples of transducers. Microphone is a transducer because it converts sound waves into electrical signals. There are many types of microphones. For example, carbon microphone, condenser microphone, ribbon microphone, dynamic microphone, and many others. The schematic symbol for a microphone looks like this. History of microphone. In 1876, Emilio Berliner invented the first microphone, which was used as a telephone voice transmitter. In 1878, David Edward Hughes created the first carbon microphone. Later on, Thomas Edison refined the carbon microphone in 1886 and called it the carbon button transmitter. In 1917, Christopher Edward Wente created the condenser microphone. In 1923, the magnetophone or the first moving call microphone was invented by Captain H. J. Round. The same year, ribbon microphone was invented by Harry F. Olsen, which became the microphone of choice due to its quality of sound recording. But all of these microphones were pretty bulky, expensive, and not easy to incorporate into other electronics. And then came the electric microphone, which were an improvement upon the condenser microphone. And they were introduced in 1964 in Bell Laboratory by Gerhard Sessler and James West. It revolutionized the industry because of its small size, reliable quality, and inexpensive price tag. It became widely manufactured and incorporated into electronics. Since then, microphones have gone through many improvements to allow me to record my voice through the microphone so easily. So, how does it work? Carbon microphone. Carbon microphone has four main parts. The diaphragm, the power source, the carbon, and the output. So, this is the diagram of the carbon microphone. This right here is the diaphragm of the microphone. The diaphragm of the microphone connects to a metal plate and the metal plate stays in contact with the carbon granules right here. As you can see, there's a battery over here that connects to the metal plate over here and there's a wire connection that connects to the carbon granules over here. So electricity flows through this side of the battery, through the metal plate, to the carbon granules and then goes out of this side. Normally you get a stable electric signal coming out of this output. When sound waves hit the diaphragm, the length of the carbon granules begins to change. And according to the equation of resistance, if the length of the carbon granules change, then the resistance of the carbon granules will also change. And due to this changing resistance, the electrical signal at the output also changes over time. So instead of getting a steady electric signal, you get a changing electric signal, and the change in the electric signal correlates to the audio it receives. Condenser Microphone the term condenser is also used to refer to capacitors. A capacitor is just two metal plates separated by an insulator. So the equation for capacitance looks like this, where the distance between the plates is inversely proportional to the capacitance. In the condenser microphone, there are two metal plates separated by an insulator, which is air. Similar to a capacitor because there are two metal plates in a capacitor separated by an insulator. So the diaphragm is one of the metal plates. So when sound wave hits the diaphragm, the distance between the two metal plate changes and according to the equation of capacitance, the capacitance of the two metal plate also changes. And then the voltage across the resistor also changes because of the changes in capacitance of the two metal plates. And so you get an audio signal at the output. Dynamic slash moving coil microphone. As the name suggests, a moving coil microphone is made up of a moving coil that's positioned near a magnetic field of a permanent magnet. 
When Sandor hits the diaphragm, the coil begins to move back and forth through the magnetic field of the magnet. And according to Faraday's law of induction, when a coil moves through a magnetic field, a changing voltage is induced across the coil. So you get a changing electrical signal at the output, which relates to the changes in the sound waves. Ribbon microphone. A ribbon microphone works pretty similar to a moving coil microphone, but instead of a moving coil, you have a metal plate that looks like a ribbon placed between two magnets. When sound wave hits the metal plate, it begins to move back and forth between the two magnets and it induces a voltage across the ribbon or the metal plate and that is received as the audio signal at the output. So these are the pros and cons of the types of microphone we talked about so far. The materials needed to make this microphone are given below. So first take the tissue paper roll and mark 1 inch from the end and cut the tube from the end using a Zacto knife. Pass the thin copper wire through the hole and leave about 2 inches at the end. Tape it down so it doesn't move. Now start coiling the wire around the tissue paper roll. Coil it about 150 to 200 times. When you're done coiling, leave about 2 inches on the end again. Use glue to keep the wire in place if needed. If there's some extra space on the toilet tissue paper, then cut it out. Now make slits all across the tube. Now push the slits outwards. This is going to be the moving coil of our microphone. Now take a paper cup and cut a circle out of it. Now mark another circle inside it that's bigger than the diameter of the toilet tissue paper tube and then cut it out using a Zacto knife. Take some tape and place it over the hole. Make sure it covers the hole properly. And cut out a circle. This is going to the diaphragm. Connect the moving coil onto the diaphragm. Now take a craft stick, using glue, attach 3 more to it. This is going to the base for the microphone. Now place two wooden cubes on the craft stick and make sure the distance between them is big enough to fit the diaphragm. Now place a bunch of magnets in between the two cubes. I drilled a hole in the third cube so that it can screw onto a tripod. And I glued it down to the crab sticks. Place the diaphragm on the two wooden cubes and secure it with glue. Now take the 3.5mm female headphone jack and glue it down to the base. Now comes the most important part. You have to solder the two wires coming from the diaphragm to the ground and the microphone wire from the headphone jack. It varies from headphone to headphone so you have to experiment to find out which one is the correct one. Now secure the wires using hot glue. Make sure they don't touch each other.
And now it's time to test the microphone. So now I'm talking into the microphone. Can you hear me guys? If you are, that means you are in my microphone is working properly. No whole lot of battery chatter in the noise. And as you can see, it's really small. Let's see if you see the noise properly. Giveaway. One lucky winner will receive a 3 month premium Instructables membership. And by the way, I'm not sponsored by Instructables. So what comes with the premium membership? Well, you can get tons of free classes that are only available to premium members of Instructables. And also there are many more features. It usually costs about $15 for 3 months of premium membership. To enter the giveaway, follow the steps below. Answer the following question in the comment section. What type of microphone did I build myself in this video? Carbon microphone, moving coil microphone, ribbon microphone, condenser microphone. Leave a thumbs up on the video and share the video publicly so I can confirm you shared it. On July 20th of 2017, the giveaway will end. I'll randomly pick one winner from the comment section. More details in the description box.